Hey everybody, how is it going? Whew, what a long day. I've been up in the mountains, tromping around in the desert regions of Eastern Oregon, and it's already like seven o'clock, and you know, I've got all this other stuff going on. <laughs> I bet that camera falls down at some point in time. It's barely propped on like a little, <clears throat> I'm so high tech. It's propped on like a one ounce salve tin and just barely on there because I wasn't paying attention. Um, okay, so <laughs> maybe you got done um, seeing me make videos of meat and plants in the wild and maybe you just watch the vervain one. Uh, and you might have because you might be wanting to know a lot about vervain, um, blue vervain in particular. Um, and I'm now going to show you how to make tincture of her. So if you want to meet her in the wild, um, and maybe you are just coming across this video, definitely dig through my videos and find the one where I talk all about her in the wild. Um, and then maybe you're coming from my live Instagram video where you watched me um, pluck all of this leaf off of the stem. Um, and I probably should have included that bit here, but sometimes when I get back home with these plants, I could just sit there all humbug by myself but I go live on my Instagram channel to tons of people and we just hang out just like normal humans and just talk about whatever while I'm um, processing these plant allies um, so this is blue vervain also called American vervain or swamp vervain um, and she is just a pretty fantastic ally I know the light is a little low in here and she's a little wilted but this is the way her blooms grow and she never blooms all at once. She'll bloom a ring at a time or so. And so don't go out there and find this lady and think, oh, I'll come back when she's bloomed more. <laughs> You'll perpetually be looking at this type of bloom just in a different area of her. Um, but definitely, again, if you want to see what she looks like intact and vibrant, like for identification purposes, um, definitely go check out my other video. I think I put too much on here. But for here, I'm going to show you how to make a tincture. Um, now... Um, with vervain, we um, only use the aerial parts, meaning the leaf and the blooms. We're not going to be using the stems to make a tincture. Um, but that's easy enough. And so I'm just going to chop her up a little bit. I'm not trying to pulverize her. I don't need to run her through a food processor or make it to where you can't identify what this plant is by looking at it. Um, some people like to do that, but usually those people are the people who like to also use grain alcohol. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I'm pretty dead set against using grain alcohol to make tinctures. And I also don't feel like we need to pulverize this plant beyond recognizability because we are too impatient to wait the six to eight weeks. Um, because normally when people they pulverize these plants, and I mean pulverize them, they'll like run them through a food processor. They'll stick them in a jar, they'll pour over really dangerous, for effect poisonous grain alcohol, which is like 180, 190 proof, crazy kill you stuff. Um, and then they will strain it out and use it in a couple weeks because they don't want to wait the six to eight weeks it will take to make a tincture properly with 100 proof vodka. Now we use 100 proof vodka I know you guys have all heard this before, but you use 100 for vodka because it's 50% water, 50% alcohol. So, <coughs> you've already got a perfectly balanced tincture that's not going to kill you, and there's no math to be done. Um, so you're like, okay, that's great. I've heard you rant all that stuff before, but what is vervain good for? Too much stuff for me to talk about on here. She is an amazing historical, like thousands and thousands of years of, of human use um, plant ally. Um, and I am particularly harvesting her because I am a stressed out person. <laughs> I work really hard. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a, I'm a big business owner. Um, that's so weird to say. I've got, I live with PTSD. I live with all kinds of shit. Shit, I'm a human. <laughs> um, and I need to get out of my head and I need to not have like so many, you know, you get stuck on a thought, you can't stop thinking, think, 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 think. Um, and I just need all my muscles in my body to relax. And I need my entire nervous system to just calm down a little bit. And Vervain can do that for you. She's also a really good friend um, for folks who want to give their... Um, 
their liver a little help functioning. Um, she's really good for your blood in that regard because the better your liver functions, the better state your blood's going to be in. Um, she's just a really, really awesome ally. I mean, she's been used for anything from... Um, from like stimulating your libido to helping clear writer's block. Um, it, it, I can't even talk on it all. I mean, with thousands of years of use um, across many continents and cultures, um, she's been used for just about anything and everything. Now, she might not have had a practical application in all those things. Um, oh, one thing, I'm gonna slip this slip my mind because I'm so tired um, she's really 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 amazing for people who have migraine headaches um, and especially if it's if you're a woman and you're menopausal um, or it's hormone related as she's pretty good hormone aid too so I'm just gonna take my slightly chopped up for vein here and I just did that so I get a, my ulu is so dull um, uh, I just do that so we can get a little bit more surface space, meaning when we cut up these leaves a bit, there's more area for the alcohol to extract from. And then I'm going to fill my jar up. Um, of course, I'm going to be chopping up more here. Um, an important thing when you are making a tincture is to pick a jar that you can fill up all the way um, for the most part with your plant matter and um, the alcohol or oil or whatever you're, well, I mean, you're going to only be making a tincture with, um, with alcohol. <laughs> but I drifted into oil there. Always make sure whenever you're making anything, whether it's alcohol or an oil infusion, that you have a jar that you can fill up for the most part all the way with your plant matter and your alcohol or oil because you don't want air in the jar because that creates oxidation. Now oxidation isn't going to kill you but it can affect the potency of it. It can make it do some funky things like turn a weird brown color, get spots all over it. Um, and so it's just best to use a jar that's going to um, be able to be filled up by your plant matter and by your alcohol or your oil. Um, so I was pretty, pretty happy to find her. I've, I've found her around here before, but it's only been like small amounts, not enough that I could like really ethically harvest much. And then um, yesterday I found just this huge amount, just a huge like tears fill amount because I was not in a great place yesterday you know I've been stressed out and so that was the big irony in me like I went to the river and I'm giving offerings and I don't even know what I need and I just had to get away and I drove like a hundred miles but that's easy to do in um, northeast Oregon and I'm like there's not even anything here for me to gather you know throwing a fit in the river you know <laughs> shit that that happens to the best of us and um and then all of a sudden, I don't know, like just something shifted and I was like, oh my God, there's, there's a vervain everywhere, just everywhere, all down the banks, just, just like, you know, we, we harvested a good amount. This whole basket was full and it didn't even touch her. It didn't even touch her. And so, um, I'm really just, I'm listening to what, you know, the land is telling me. I'm listening to the plants. I need to calm my ass down. <laughs> and this is going to be the plant to do that for me. Um, I really believe that if we're making a genuine effort to like be out on the land um these plants are sentient these plants um are aware and they kind of just like hey come over here hey look at me and they kind of like show themselves to us um when we are needing them the most like i've spent like i you know i've gone years like looking for a plant looking for a plant can't find that plant can't find that plant and then when I like let go of it, and it's like genuinely when I really need the plant for a specific health issue or a mental health issue or whatever's going on, all of a sudden, there she is. And she's been in the place that I've looked and just never seen her. You know, and so I, I just feel um, like that's definitely an aspect uh, when you get like closer to the land and like really get out here and start looking for these allies and listening to yourself and kind of just like paying attention to these um signals but yeah this is this is easy folks all you're gonna do is you're gonna find your blue vervain you're going to pick off the blooms and the leaves you're gonna chop her up a bit so she's got more surface space i'm just gonna hurry it along here um 
You're gonna chop her up a bit so she has more surface surface space. I should be able to say that name. It's one of my family's names. Um, and you're gonna put it in your jar and you're just gonna pour a hundred proof vodka over the top. You're gonna have a, a sharper knife than me because that will make things go easier. <laughs> you could use scissors too. And honestly, you don't have to chop it up if you don't want to. Just let it sit for a week or so longer. The alcohol, the plant, they know what they're doing. They've been doing this dance for a long time. Um, Okay, so maybe a little bit more. Now, the cool thing is, is that I can wilt this, um, and I can make a body oil too. Um, and, because we can absorb uh, medicines transdermally too. I wouldn't say she smells all that great, but it's a really nice way to just calm and relax and, and pull yourself down. Like, if you got out of a, a hot bath and you took um, some vervain body oil and you rubbed yourself down and then um, and then you um, took like a half dropper full of vervain tincture you are just gonna mellow out <laughs> you know and while you're doing that you're also supporting your immune system and all these other just she's just an amazing all-around body supportive herbal ally um, and you don't have to use a whole lot of her to get those effects either um, and you can make a tea. I've never personally enjoyed it. I think a lot of people do that with vervain um, officinal. I think I always say the Latin names wrong. But this is vervain um, hatata. I think I said that wrong too. <laughs> um, this is American vervain, not European vervain. Which is funny to say that because she also grows... Um, uh, this variety also grows in a lot of European countries. So isn't it funny how humans are like, you are of here, you are not of here, but they really are. Um, nettle infusion. You should be drinking it. Um, okay, so next step is, am I rambling here, is to just add the 100 proof vodka. Um, if you can't get 100 proof in your state, don't be tempted to go to grain alcohol, but honestly, if you can't buy hunter proof, you probably can't buy grain alcohol. Grain alcohol is illegal in most states, but if you can't get hunter proof, you can use 80 proof, and that's fine, and you don't have to worry about any math with that. Now again, the reason that hunter proof vodka is ideal is because she's 50% water, 50% alcohol, and that's great because not only are you getting her alcohol soluble properties, we're going to be extracting her water soluble properties you don't get that you don't get those properties when you're using grain alcohol and I'll tell you what and uh, this isn't me like blowing my own horn but everybody who tries my tinctures or any tincture made with fresh plant matter which is important and 100 proof vodka they're like wow that was a smooth well-rounded tincture and it's not because we're using like good quality vodka or anything not I mean we are but you know what I mean it's because she has all of her properties available when you start using grain alcohol you are only extracting the most volatile properties of that plant and in a lot of ways it is more of a medicine it becomes not so much a plant medicine but a pharmaceutical medicine and if anybody is likely to have a reaction to a tincture it's like it's likely <laughs> that it was because the it was made with dried plant matter for one which is so unfortunately uncom very common in heroic healer methods and um, and they used grain alcohol um, so again I'm all about the hunter proof vodka because there's no math what goes in this bottle is ready and what comes out of this bottle is ready meaning I don't have to add water or do all these ratios one to five this to this this to that she's just done she's just ready um, and she has her water soluble properties it's kind of like you know how taking vitamins like as a pill like from the store can be dangerous because sometimes your body needs other vitamins to assimilate that vitamin which is why it's best to get your vitamins from food intake because the plant knew what it was doing <laughs> it has all the vitamins within it and the minerals within it for your body to fully digest it it's like okay this is accessible to us now same thing with making um, a tincture with hunter proof vodka we are saying okay plant 
we trust you and we know that all of your constitutes are important all of you is important not just your strongest parts all of you come together in like this dance to make you one whole accessible medicine to us um and that's why i use an vodka. <laughs> okay so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm going to um write a label so i'm gonna write blue vervain 100 proof vodka, so I know what's in it. And then I'm gonna check that it's a tincture and then it's wild crafted and um, where I got it at and the date began. Now, you don't have to make this complicated of a label and I make mine, I buy these Avery labels and I use their free online template that comes with when you buy it and I put on their things like, um, uh, like it says, I can check if it's a tincture, if it's honey, if it's an oil infusion, other. I can check if it's wild crafted, store bought, a mix. I can put all the weights on there if I need to for making batch numbers. I can put the date that I extracted it on. I can put if it's wild crafted where I got it from. And again, I do all that because I do have to make batch numbers. Um, but you don't have to do this. You could just use, you could just buy these labels blank and just write on them by hand. You could use a piece of masking tape. If you really want to, you could take a Sharpie marker and write on the top of the jar. Although I don't suggest that because these jars tend to seep a little alcohol now and then. Um, and alcohol will remove a Sharpie marker. Um, but labels are important because, let's say you get real busy making tinctures and oil infusions and you're like, oh, I'll remember what that is. <laughs> You might not now. Um, you get super into it. You might. I might be able to you know, look at this without a label and be like, oh, that's vervain. I might be able to taste it, smell it, look at it, and figure it out. But it's easier just to label her. It's easier just to do this and take away the mental work, right? Um, so anyhow, that's it. So chop up your vervain, just the leaves and the blooms. Um, put it in your jar. Put your 100 proof vodka over top of it. Slap a label on it. It sounded like I broke it. I think it was just my ring. <laughs> that had been crazy. Uh, and then you're going to sit it um, in a cool, dark place for six to eight weeks. And then you're going to strain it and use as needed. And now you do not need to be making half gallon increments. This is a half gallon jar. Um, the really cool thing is you could buy this little, it's about a half gallon um, thing of vodka. You can even buy a small one. But you buy one of these and you buy a bunch of little small jars and you go out here and you start finding these plant allies and you can just make tiny amounts of tinctures at a time. Because here's the deal. You're not taking shots of this. You're just taking dropperfuls of this. Like, or not even that. Just like drops. It depends on the plant. Look up the plant with the average dosages. Uh, but you don't need to make a ton. And before you know it, one gallon of vodka has got you a year or more worth of tinctures. You know, um, so you can just make smaller amounts. You don't need to make huger amounts and it can last you for a long time. Um, and that being said, if you forget about this on a shelf and you're like, oh my God, it's been two years since I've made that. Don't worry, she's perfectly fine. She won't go bad. She won't be too strong. She won't be anything like that. Um, alcohol, um, at this ratio never goes bad. As long as you have this cap on tight and it's not able to evaporate off, She's good for basically an eternity. Um, I mean, you've never heard of vodka going bad in your shelf, right? You know, I'm, I mean, eventually there's probably a point where it does go bad, but within your next decade of a lifetime, you're probably just fine. Um, and so, and it won't get stronger. Um, it won't degrade. It'll just sit here and hang out. It'll just hang out. So... If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Turn on notifications because they're not quite the same. You can subscribe and then you might get notifications, but if you subscribe and turn on notifications, you will get notified. You'll get a notification, like every other notification that comes to your phone when I have uploaded new videos. And then be sure to comment here and like um, because that really helps me know that you're here with me and it helps other people find me too. Speaking of finding me, are you following me on Instagram yet? Because if you're not, you should come over and check it out. I don't just talk about herbs on there. I talk about all kinds of real life stuff. Um, you know, dealing with traumas, what it's like to live where I live, um, living off the land, you know, working with plants, medicine. All, I call people out on stuff. It's, it's, it's pretty 
it's pretty interactive. Um, and I'm there and I talk and I do live videos and I share lots of information saved in my bio. And you can also find out more about me and the things I stand for and what I do by checking out my website. Um, and you can find all that stuff by the, um, the bio here in my YouTube. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time, okay? Bye.